I'm going to talk a little bit about the plan, what it is, uh, how to put it together, why I think it's important. Uh, it, Bill called an emergency disaster plan, which is really what it's called. But just to be clear, there's a difference in, in my mind between an emergency and a disaster. Um, so a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about are going to be more emergency things. Um, there was one time that one incident that we had on the farm that I'm going to talk about that I would consider a disaster. The other ones of all have been emergencies, at least in my mind. So uh, first of all, I think we should define emergency, what it actually is. It's any unplanned event that can cause death or significant injuries to faculty, staff, students, the public, or that can shut down a business, disrupt operations, cause physical environmental damage. I think everyone gets that, you know, tornadoes, that, that kind of stuff. Um, but there's another part of an emergency defined as a, it threatens an institution's financial standing or public in it, image. Also de is right in the definition. So for us, I would consider seven or eight dollar gas an emergency because we deliver birds all over the country, and that would, uh, you know, have a, a big impact on our uh, financial status. So um, other things, dead birds that can come from disease, they can come from the weather, uh, predator loss. They're all going to be dealt with in a different way. Um, floods. Uh, I, we, a year after we built this pen. Um, I went down there, and there were uh, carp swimming next to the uh, pens. And, you know, just when you think you've seen everything, you wake up in the morning and you have to figure out how to keep fish out of your pens. So um, you, never, you never know what you're going to find. I didn't have this written down anywhere. never thought I would ever have to deal with fish in, in pheasant pens, but there it is. Um, certainly snow, uh, snow, wind damage. Ice, you know, those are all very common occurrences uh, in our industry. But there's a lot of other circumstances that, that could come up that are going to, you know, cause an, an emergency situation. And, you know, certainly injury, uh, even death, uh, all kinds of natural disasters and fire. I put the media and the press in there. Uh, you remember I said it have an effect on your public image. Uh, bad press um, is can have a tremendous impact on your business. And with social media nowadays, it's instantaneous and it's there forever. So you really should have a plan. What if someone does post an undercover video or you have some negative press? What are you going to do? Are you going to do anything? Are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? You really need to be thinking about that, especially this day and age. Uh, that truck could just as easily be a load of pheasants as opposed to boxes laying on the side of the road. What are you going to do if that happens while you're delivering birds? Who are you going to call? So, um, so why plan? What's the purpose of putting, going through the effort to putting this thing together? Well, it's a good, it's a good way to brainstorm about potential problems that, that might co come up. You, know, you might come up with things that you never thought would be a problem that could be. Um, it's going to prepare you, and the more you put into the plan, the better off you're going to be prepared. Uh, during a crisis, people are often reactive and emotional, and they don't make good decisions. Um, actually, it's not a fact that they don't make good decisions. People do make good decisions sometimes in crisis. They just don't make thought-through decisions. They're not thinking a week ahead, two weeks ahead, a month ahead. They're thinking an hour ahead. They're thinking tomorrow. So if you're thinking about it and it's not actually, you're not in the moment, um, you, you're better off better off to get a, a thought through decision. Uh, it gives the others a resource in the event that you're not there. Maybe you're the reason there's an emergency. Maybe you're, we're in an accident, in the hospital, uh, whatever. Someone else should have a point of reference to know what to do if you're, if you're not around. And you can make a solid thought through decision uh, without the stress. It's easier to think um, when you're not in in a stress mode or crisis mode. It's easier to think and think ahead um, before you go. So how do you plan? It's, it's pretty straightforward. You, you think about the problems. You prepare for them. Uh, you respond when something happens. You go into a recovery mode after the incident happens. You try to mitigate any damages, and then you basically start over and, and prepare again. So the first step is brainstorming. You know, just Get a piece of paper, get as many people involved as you can, write down all the possibilities uh, that you think could go wrong. Um, 
how you're going to respond to each of them. You know, determine the effects of the responses. Uh, use a lot of if and then statements because uh, when you make a decision and move on to the next decision, each one's going to affect the other, and you, and uh, you just want to go just flush it out as much as you can. There's this this small a detail as you can get, just write it all down. You're not, you know, organizing. You're just trying to brainstorm any possible problems that, that might occur. Um, and make sure you can consider all the possibilities, no matter how small you might uh, think they be. Uh, prepare. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, the prayer part. After you've got all this stuff written down, uh, you know, it's kind of the written part of the plan. This is when you piece it together and say, okay, this really isn't, you know, important. This is, and you start writing it and putting it all down. Uh, this is where you're going to flush out, you know, all the little details, what you actually do in the time of a crisis or emergency. And this is where you're going to have a chance to really think and rethink your responses. You know, if you get to, you know, it's usually two or three steps before you get through your, your initial, when you're in the crisis, there's two or three steps. Um, maybe you get to the end of it and say, boy, this is not where I want to be. You can take a few steps back and say, okay, maybe we'll go this route instead of this route. And it makes it easier while you're doing it and thinking about it, you know, uh, bef again, before you're actually in an in emergency or a crisis. And then this is really, really the proactive step. As you're going through and writing down all these things that are going wrong, you could look at it and say, wow, you know, maybe if I put some guards on that saw, then maybe there's something that you can do that will prevent that from happening and, you know, mitigate some of that problems from even occurring. So you can say, I'm going to go do this and this and this, and then I won't have to really worry about um, the, the problems that might occur. Make sure you include the following in, in the plan. Uh, you want to define each emergency. You know, you don't want to just say, if we have dead birds, this is what we're going to do. You want to say, okay, if there's dead birds from a predator, this is how I want to proceed. If they're from a disease, this is how I want to proceed. So, you know, be somewhat specific and define the emergency. Make sure you, you know who is doing what and define the roles. Don't try to do everything yourself. You know, assign your key people to do various things they, and make them responsible for it. Uh, make sure you have contact list of everyone that's involved so you could go pull the plan and say I need to call so and so and it's all right there. Uh, certainly a list of emergency contacts and um, so once you get all that plan written out and you've got it, something's going to happen. You're going to get into an emergency, a crisis, and you're going to have to respond to it. The best thing I can tell you is after you've got all this work done is that you can just be decisive. You know you've got an idea what you want to do, and you should proceed with it. Um, don't try and wing it. After you've gone through all that work of preparing, you know where you want to go. Don't do a 180 and, and go a different way just because, you know, you're emotional. Don't let the emotions get the better. You follow the plan. Um, within reason, you know, you can't plan for everything. Um, this is really an outline. It's not, you know, the final plan for everything because you can't plan for everything. So, um, you know, it's really used as an outline to get, to get you through your uh, crisis. Um, and it's important to realize that your response really doesn't stop after the initial incident. Uh, I'll give you an example. If someone were to uh, cut their finger off, you know, saw on your farm, your book says you should call 911. Okay, you call 911, and they... Uh, get their fingers sewn back on, uh, but the next day you get a knock on your door and it's OSHA, and they say uh, we understand that you've had a, a, a fairly significant injury. We want to go through your farm, and we don't want to just see where he cut his finger off. We want to see your entire facility. What are you going to do? He calls you back and said, or the the guy that hurt himself calls you back and said, Hey, I've been telling you about that saw for two months. You didn't do anything. You're going to be hearing from my lawyer. What are you going to do? Okay, so you want to be thinking about all that stuff. It's not just, oh my God, there's a problem. It's, there's a problem. And as you go through the steps, where are you going to end up? So think of everything. When you make a decision, it's going to have an effect on the next decision, which will have an effect on the next decision. Uh, the recovery part of the, the plan is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's basically getting things back to the way they were before you had the problem. And it's, you know, the... the the more you plan, the more you prepare, 
the easier this step is going to be. You'll be able to get things back on track uh, a lot quicker and a lot smoother. Uh, is basically what it is. Uh, mitigating the, the problems, I mean, all that is, is um, lessen in intensity and make less severe. Again, the more you plan, the, uh, the more you're going to be able to kind of mitigate some of the things that are going wrong. How are you going to make them less severe? You can think about how you want to make some things less severe. If this happens, then maybe I'll, you know, do X, Y, and Z, and that will um, help things out, will help me get back to where I was before. So the biggest thing, I think the biggest part of this step, the, the most work is actually getting the plan together. But I think the most important part of it is after an emergency and after a crisis that you look at it and say, okay, this is what happened, this is where our shortcomings were, and this is what we need to do to get it, fix it, make it better for next time. So what did you learn from it? What can be done better? What mistakes were made? How do you keep them from happening again? Revise the plan based on your experience and Above all, always take something positive away from, from a negative experience. I can't stress that enough. Um, in December of 2009, we had a 14-inch wet, heavy snow, destroyed most of our pens. We had 12,000 birds running around. Um, it was a, and, and I consider that to be the disaster on the farm. I mean, every pen was ripped in some way or form. Some of the pens you couldn't even see. And... One of the guys came in, it was two days later, soaking wet, taking off his wet clothes. He's like, whoa, at least we don't have to water. I said, why? <laughs> positive, something positive. <laughs> I said, all right. So they had a good attitude. But the biggest thing that we took away from that, and I can tell you what it is, that night we got 14 inches of wet, heavy snow. That morning, every single employee made it to work on time. They knew what that snow meant and they were there on time. They stayed all week, uh, sun up to sundown. You know, even when you're not seeing progress, they're, you know, they're just, they're grinding through it. They stayed, not one of them complained. They just did it. We got it done. And we now know that we can count on every one of those guys when the chips are down. So we can We've got, a, and they're going to be here on Tuesday, so you can ask them about it uh, Tuesday for the uh, lunch. Um, but we know that we can, we, we can really, we've got a staff that we can count on when the chips are down that they're going to be there for us. So, I mean, that was the biggest thing that we took away from that whole disaster. So, some key points to remember. Uh, keep the plan updated. If you do it once and stick it on the shelf and it's there for three years, it's going to be out, out of date. There's going to be a whole other set of circumstances. If you're going to do it, keep it update, updated. Uh, review it annually. Make sure everyone knows about it. If you're the only one that knows about it, it's not going to do you much good if, if everyone else is not aware. Uh, make sure it's easily understandable. Make it concise. Make it easy to read. And, you know, you could come up with something like that in a quick hurry to when you start writing down all the problems that could occur on a, a pheasant farm. So, you know, keep it uh, concise is the thing. So, in conclusion, I guess what I want to say, um, you know, thinking about it is going to make you better prepared. Even if that's all you do is think about it, that's going to make you better prepared. If you write some stuff down, you're going to be even more prepared. The farther you take it, the more prepared you're going to be. So, you know, it's really how much you want to put into it. Uh, the, more you, the more you prepare, the more benefit you're going to get. Um, the plan is to, intended to be a guide and not a Bible. So, you know, you can't plan for everything. I mentioned that earlier. You know, no one's going to put uh, in, their, in their plan how to keep carp out of a flight pen. So, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Just use it as a guide. That's what it's intended for. There's no undo button in the middle of the crisis. When you start making decisions, those decisions are what you're going to have to, have to live with. So it's better to think about them now when you really don't have to live with them as opposed to when you do. And then finally, this whole plan is really about being prepared and being prepared for as much as you possibly can be prepared for. You know there's a lot of uncertainty in this business, and the more you can prepare for and the more you can handle and be ready for the better off you're going to be.